Drawing a car can be intimidating. Perspective. Ellipses. Symmetry. Curve linear forms. But the truth is that drawing a car is a lot like drawing a face. You just need to understand the basic structure first. Where are the planes? Where do the eyes and mouth go? But after you've established that, you get to have more fun and get creative. And just like faces, it's the small differences between features that can give a car its individual character. And cars can have a lot of character. BAM is the show where professional animation artists redraw the art that you send in. And if you like supporting that sort of thing, check out our Patreon linked below. I think cars are intimidating because they're like the math of the drawing world. And uh, none of us really got into drawing because we were good at math. I don't know if math is the right word, but it is a different type of drawing because you're drawing inside constraints and you have to draw through your forms using guides. Mm, and you have to draw those perfect ellipses. Exactly. So today we're gonna cover all the structural drawing stuff that you'll need to know to draw a car. And then we're gonna draw stylized animation cars for all the characters that you guys submitted. I've been drawing cars on Rick and Morty now for 10 years and I am just revving <laughs> to show you guys my techniques. So, to draw a car, we must first understand how to draw primitive shapes. First, start with some 3D rectangles in loose perspective. You can practice segmenting them as well to find their center lines. And then, add more subdivisions. Try to make sure your lines are going with the perspective of your rectangles. And watch out for any wonky ones, like this. It's important in your artistic journey that you be able to draw primitive shapes in perspective from your imagination. So try filling a whole page with nothing but wireframe rectangles in perspective. Once you have strengthened your ability to depict 3D rectangles, you should try a more rigid perspective exercise. Draw a rectangle and subdivide a side with an X. The intersection of the X is where the object's center line is. People often misjudge where the center line should be on a plane in perspective. They might try to draw the line here when the X technique shows that the line is actually here. Then you can do it again and again to create an equally divided plane. And if you needed more segments, you can extend out the ends and connect a diagonal line through the center. And you can do this as many times as you need. And once you have this shape, you can subdivide it and draw the ellipses in these squares. By first making a diamond, and slowly forming an ellipse by connecting these points. You can even figure out where an ellipse would be on the other side of a cube by extending your lines over and repeating the same steps. Side note here, it really helps to draw your guidelines with very light pressure so that your important forms stand out. And all the cool, really light skeletal work can make your drawings look really cool. You can now extrude your ellipses and make a primitive set of tires. You should try this exercise from different perspectives and with different proportions and even with more tires. What we're trying to show you here is that instead of just eyeballing something, it is possible to draw through your forms and create pretty accurate perspective guides. And you can do it for like anything. I mean, look at the guides that we made for drawing a wedge, a trapezoid, a, a bullet light, any complex form that you can think of, there is a way to encase it in a set of wire guides. Once you've drawn enough forms inside guides, it will make sketching and eyeballing complex shapes much easier, and you'll be used to drawing inside constraints. Max, have you ever done it in a car? You mean drive the posted speed limit? Always. Let's try drawing a basic car now, like this beautiful 1984 Ford Escort. And the reason why we're drawing a car like this is because older, boxier cars are the easiest to draw. First draw a box to indicate the overall perspective, then segment it to build the body. Keep in mind that the box has to be long enough for all the wheels and doors. Then build a greenhouse that tilts inwards. Next, find the wheel placement and draw in some ellipses. 
Make sure the body is sitting correctly on the wheels. Most cars sit fairly low to the ground, so you can stop drawing cars like this, unless you're drawing a monster truck. And now add some tapering to the body and greenhouse and start dividing the forms with doors and paneling. And notice that even though I told you in the previous exercise to measure out distances with guides, my process only includes loose guides. When you become more familiar with drawing cars and car shapes, you won't need guides as much. Now add other body elements like bumpers and more body paneling. And keep in mind, it's okay to move things around when you're working. If there's not enough room for the doors, it's fine to extend the body. Just remember that when you move things, keep the perspective consistent. Start building the front grille and add the headlights. Now it's time to just finesse things like doors and body panels and finish out the tires. Remember that they need to sit inside the wheel wells, but their exact placement can be up to you. If you're having a problem with placement, try to draw a guide so that you can see the alignment of objects. Always flip your drawing over and look at its reversed appearance to check for errors. Good drawings look correct when mirrored. And then just keep adding detail. It still needs hubcaps, side view mirrors, hood lines, trim, and wipers. And finally, you should add the interior. So a big shape for the dash, and then try to fit in the seats, ideally in good locations so they don't make any weird tangents. It's tough to fit everything in here accurately, so use your best judgment. You may have to cheat things for best clarity. Max, how do you make a small fortune with a Tesla? Mm, you start with a very large fortune and there's uh, no more words on the teleprompter, so. I think that was the joke. Uh, yeah, it's, they're expensive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Joseph sent us these characters from his World War I comic. And it looks like the Doughboys are gonna need some vehicles to help with their war effort. Let's start with a tank because big, boxy, military vehicles are the easiest and best place to start, since they don't really have complex curves. I start by roughing out the overall shape, which is kind of a diamond box, and I imagine that the perspective lines are going a bit like this, to emphasize that the top part is high above the viewer. And then I just draw in shapes for the tracks, and I work out the middle part, which is again, just boxes. I modified the shape from a real Mark V to give it a much taller turret so that the overall silhouette became more exaggerated and clear. And then I just kept in adding smaller details which are mostly flat elements. Although in real life, tank treads are super complex chains with a ton of joints. In animation, we would probably simplify them for movement. Unless we're showing a very close up view, it would be too much to show all those linkages if it had to be animated by hand. Let's also draw a Model T ambulance for the medical staff. These older cars are great to start with because they are made out of such simple shapes. It's just a frame with tall, thin wheels with boxes and fenders on top. The only thing I'm going to do is skew the covered area a bit to make it more stylized. Model T's have a lot of spindly bicycle type elements on them. They sit fairly high on the frame, which means that you can see a lot of the undercarriage. So it is helpful to understand what the hell is going on down there. If we look at a 3D model, we can see the axles, the frame, and the transmission. Attached to the axle is the suspension, which absorbs bumps and keeps the body of the car floating on top. Interesting fact, Model T's have incredible suspension that allows them to drive over all kinds of terrain because they were designed at a time when roads were a lot sparser. Brent, can you imagine, like, we have so many roads. Can you imagine a world without roads? That I cannot, Max, because I am from the great state of Texas. Texas, where they have the highest square footage of pavement per person. Tires can be drawn with a variety of methods. You could become extraordinarily good at drawing ellipses, but you can also use guides. In real life, designers use various ellipse guides with pre-made sizes and perspectives, but in digital art, we can use the ellipse tool to create guides. By making an ellipse and skewing it into the proper perspective and duplicating it, you can create a perfect tire guide to trace. Or you can also make a tire out of stroked ellipses and merge them to create a uniform tire. You can also use Lazy Nozomi. 
That way, you can get smoothly drawn, handmade lines. A simple tire might just be a cylinder with a hubcap, but a more realistic tire might have a complex hubcap. For that, you're going to want to design a flat guide and skew it into place to trace. Keep in mind that not all tires are the same. The proportions of a tire can say a lot about the specific function of a vehicle. So see what works for you. How was that? Uh, good, we, we just need to show them how to do tread now. I'm not doing tread. I'm not doing tread. The, no, 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 nobody should be doing tread in animation. I'm not doing... Victor sent us this forest ranger fox, so he needs some sort of vehicle to go with him. Now, real park ranger cars are kind of like these Chevy Tahos, but these look a little bit too imposing and modern for a charming character like this. So he should get something a bit more vintage and friendly. Perhaps something like this old truck or this Jeep. Jeeps are very interesting because their design hasn't changed much throughout the years, making them one of the most easily recognizable cars to draw. I'll start by just boxing out a pickup shape and then adding fenders. And then I'll add some more utility with a big grill, a winch, and some extra mirrors, and maybe some side panels. At some point, I wanted to make it look slightly less aggressive, so I reduced the size of the wheels and made the cab a bit taller. So that way we'll be able to see inside where the character is. Since we're drawing cars for animation, they can be more stylized than their real life counterparts. And then I wanted to try one more with a canvas top, since I felt like the pickup bed wasn't quite friendly enough for our forest ranger. This is what the final sketch looked like, and then I cleaned it up using a perspective grid, which we discussed how to make in this video, and then added color. Oh, I actually have a good uh, driving tip. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you press the gas and you press the brake at the same time, it'll take a screenshot. Yeah, so try that out. Don't try that. No, no, no. Try it. Try it. Don't. No, try it. Bailey sent us this drawing of a cool futuristic lady, and we feel that she needs some kind of cyberpunk car to be leaning against. For this car, I looked at cars from video games like Rocket League and Cyberpunk 2077 to help me come up with shapes that are much different than what you would find today. The first car I did ended up being a bit too much like an 80s coupe, and for the second car, I tried to make a miniature boxy van, but I felt like this wasn't sporty or sleek enough. So for the third car, I wanted to try more of an airfoil shape, but then juxtapose that idea with big fenders, like it was a hybrid city off-road vehicle. Once I was happy with the design, I decided to change the angle of it so that it would match the drawing of the character. Right now we're seeing the car from slightly above, and the character from about eye level. So the new drawing of the car should fit into a box that is about this shape. This wasn't too different than the first angle, so all I needed to do was just go over the whole design and shift the fenders and curves around to match the new angle. For this drawing, I used Lazy Nozumi to help me draw the tire ellipses, and then I used some of Kyle's screen tones to finish off the drawing so that it would look like it was a page from a manga. Yeah, this is great and all, Brent, but can't I just trace a photograph? One trick I have for drawing cars is to start with a photograph and then manipulate it to create a more cartoony form. Then you can trace it and simplify it until you have a much more stylized car. This method only really works if you have a good understanding of car forms and good drawing construction techniques. Otherwise, it will just look like you traced a photograph. Katie sent us these cool armadillo raiders. And I think this one needs a post-apocalyptic vehicle to help her wreak havoc. For the base of the car, I wanted to try an 88 Porsche 911 so that it had sort of a feminine quality. But then I also want to add a bunch of aggressive parts from other machines to build an apocalypse buggy. If you actually look at the car designs in Mad Max, you will notice that each vehicle is a carefully designed artistic statement with a lot of vehicles looking like they have a specific function or have been modified to accentuate their already aggressive features. There are a lot of found object elements that are either functional, like this truck with a claw, or they're decorative, like this skull. The designers really thought about what type of objects these characters had access to. 
what their values and belief systems were, and they found ways to build vehicles that celebrated those kind of things. The first thing I want to do is raise the body up and have it mounted on huge tractor tires. The 911 has a rear spoiler on the back, but I wanted to replace that with something more aggressive, so I opted to use a front loader bucket instead. I also added a front grille made of tubing and corrugated metal, and just an assortment of headlights, canisters, and pipes. After the first pass, I realized that this drawing was a bit too realistic for this character, so I wanted to try a second time with the same vehicle and parts, but with just crazier proportions. It's very important to adhere the style of your vehicles to the style of your characters. It would be weird if the characters from Gravity Falls drove extremely realistic cars. The prop designer on that show simplified out all the unnecessary detail and exaggerated their proportions so the cars would match the world. After some finessing, I felt like this design matched closer to the style of the character. To paint this drawing, instead of cleaning it up, I simply painted underneath the sketch and kept the shapes a little bit looser. In visual development art for movies, the drawings are often a bit looser and the artists tend to focus more on lighting and form than the perfectness of each detail. I started by just blocking out each shape with its own color so that I could easier select it and paint more details on top. And then I added some multiply layers for lighting and distress. And if you want to learn about more painting techniques, you should check out our video on painting backgrounds. Something we haven't talked about yet is how to draw the same car from different angles, which is something that you would have to do as a prop designer. I will sometimes make a side profile guide that I can then use to warp into place and build out new angles. And keep in mind that when you are doing this, that cars are not perfectly parallel boxes. They have inward leaning tumble homes and other elements that can't be flat. So the guide can really only help you start the drawing and help keep your proportions consistent. Using a lot of reference helps with this. Anytime I am drawing a car that is loosely based on a real car, I am looking at photos. And sometimes I just make 3D models and trace them. But your model doesn't have to be perfect. If you can find ways to put shapes together and form the base of your car, you can then trace and modify it to suit your needs. You can also project your 3D model on top of your background to match it perfectly to your scene. In ancient times, warriors would paint their bodies, clad themselves in leather, armor, and feathers to state their intentions and intimidate their enemies. Today, we announce our presence to the world with the automobile. Cars are more than machines. They express our identity. That's why it takes 256 different makes and models to satisfy the American car market. <laughs> exactly. I find that drawing them is sort of like drawing a character. They have symmetry, they have eyes, curves, implied lines, and they have a bit of an attitude as well. Hmm. But the most important thing to remember is that they should tell you something about who's driving them. Your drawing should be believable, but it should also have character. And cars are just the beginning. Once you start drawing them, you'll be able to tackle a whole world of cool mechanical stuff. Cars are the gateway to complex machines like planes, spaceships, tanks, and boats. So underneath the video are links to even more car drawing resources. I really like these guides and everything that Scott Robertson has to say about vehicle design. And down there is also our Discord. So. If you want to see your art redrawn in an episode, send it to bam.redrawmyart at gmail.com. Thank you.